today we'll see how transient loads can be used instead of multiple subcases. Today we'll use an example with two blocks with a hole through it, which will later create a bolt with some bolt preload. So we'll begin by creating our simulation files in the Nastrian solver environment. We'll create a solution 401 multi-step nonlinear solution. And we'll select large displacements. We'll also specify some output requests. Since we're going to be using bolt preload, we'd like our bolt results. And we'll also be using glue and contact. So we'll also request those output requests. Grid point forces can also be a valuable output. Our first subcase will be a preload subcase because we're going to be applying bolt preload. We'll take the defaults for the preload subcase. Now we also want a second subcase, so we'll go back to the sim and we'll create a nonlinear static subcase. Here we want sequential dependence on the previous subcase, which is our bolt preload. We'll specify an end time that's equal to the number of load cases that we want to put in, and also the same number for the number of increments. Now we'll go to the FEM. We'll mesh using the automatic element size option. We'll specify some materials for those blocks in our mesh collector. Next we'll create our bolt connection using the bolt connection tool. We'll specify a bolt with a nut. We'll select define head by whole edge same for the nut, and we'll specify the spider diameter to be one and a half inches for our one inch diameter through hole. We'll use C-beam for our shank and RBE2 for our spiders. Here you can see the shank element, which is our C-beam, connected to the spiders on either end. Next we'll specify some physical properties for our shank element. We'll use the PBML and specify a rod beam section with a half inch radius. And we'll also specify the same material that we put on our blocks. All right, now we forgot to bring in points when we created our FEM. So we can go ahead and edit the FEM to allow points to come into our FEM. And we're going to use that point for the line of action for our force and our moment. And we want to have that force and moment transmitted through our assembly on the face that we just created a point to face spider. Next we'll create our bolt preload, making sure that our bolt preload subcase is active in our solution, and we'll specify 500 pounds for a force or displacement on 1D elements. Now we'll deactivate our preload subcase because we want the remaining simulation objects to be used in all subcases. 
So the first is going to be contact, and we'll create it using the automatic pairing algorithm. You can see here it's found one face pair. I'm going to specify contact. We'll put in a coefficient of static friction, as well as a min and max search distance. So there you can see it's at the global level. It's not in either of the subcases. We'll do the same for our force. Here we'll select components and field to specify multiple forces at multiple times. We have a few methods that we can use to import the loads into our table. One is using a spreadsheet. And here we have the spreadsheet input. And here is another spreadsheet that we have our loads defined, which we can copy and then paste into our input spreadsheet. Next, we'll say add ins update table. This will then send those values to the table field dialog. All right, then next we need to specify the application point. Let's change the focus of the dialog to selecting that point, and then we'll pick it. Next, we'll do the same thing for moments. Here we'll specify the same components and field input. But instead of using spreadsheet input, we'll import directly from a CSV file. So here are the spreadsheets that I had opened earlier. We'll just pick it directly for the moments. And here you can see it imports those moments as a function of time. It's best practice to use zeros for the initial time step. That way, if there's any issues with convergence, it will be able to ramp the moment or the load. All right, now are we ready to solve? Well, it's a good thing we have the model setup check because it's found an error. We've forgotten to apply a constraint. Here we can see that in the model setup check. Let's go ahead and put a constraint on our model. And now we should be ready to solve. So here I'll pause the video, but you can see that it takes 27 seconds to solve in the solution monitor. Now we can take a look at our results. Here we can see results for our two subcases, our bolt preload and our operating loads. So here's our bolt preload subcase. And then we can see our operating loads put on top of that bolt preload since we had sequential dependence turned on. All right, another way that we can take a look at the results is with graphing. Next, we'll create an XY graph of displacement at a particular node across iterations, starting with our bolt preload and going through all of our operating conditions. So here you can see it starts with our preload displacement and shows the displacements at each time for each of the load cases. We also have uh, bolt preload results. Here we can see our axial force that we had applied on our bolt. We also have contact results. Here we can see contact force, or let's take a look at pressure.
and we can also take a look at the contact traction. All right, so that looks good. Now, let's say that we'd like to evaluate another set of loads and moments, but this time without any preload. We can start by cloning our solution, and here I'll rename it to 401 without bolt preload. We'll remove our bolt preload subcase. We'll also remove our face contact as well as our loads because we're going to have different loads that we want to apply, ones that we don't want to have our bolt preload on, but we'll retain our constraints. Now for applying the glue, what we can do is clone the glue and we'll rename the original to contact because we had that specified as contact and I'll rename the cloned one to glue and we'll change it from contact to glue. There you can see it's applied to the same faces and we can add it to the active solution. Alright, so next, similar to what we did earlier, we'll create component force and moments applied at the point. We'll also import from CSV the forces with no preload. And here we have the same number of load cases or loads that we'd like to use at the five time points. And we'll do the same for the moments. All right, now we should be ready to solve. And since we're using glue instead of contact, this was a live solve. It really only took three seconds to complete. And here we can see our results for those five different loads and moments, which we can also graph across time. Now I had created at time step four seconds a zero condition to see that it returns to zero displacement. So we can see that in our XY plot.